In this topic, we're going to discuss transpiration. So by the end of this topic, you should be able to answer the questions, what is transpiration? What is the role of transpiration? And how do you measure water uptake under different conditions using a potometer? And then finally, what are the factors that affect transpiration? So what is transpiration? This is the evaporation of water vapour from plants, and it occurs at two sites. You've got the stomata and the cuticle. The stomata occur in the leaves, and in herbaceous plants, they occur in the stems as well. These account for 90% of water loss. The cuticle is a waxy external layer on the plant surfaces, and this limits water loss through the cell walls, although up to 10% of water can escape through it. Transpiration is the result of plants having leaves adapted for photosynthesis. So these leaves have got a large surface area to absorb light, and they've also got stomata to allow for the diffusion of carbon dioxide into the leaf. Now both of these features result in immense loss of water. Transpiration is not essential as a means of bringing water to the leaves. Osmotic processes could achieve this. It does, however, help although less than 1% of water moved in the transpiration stream is used by the plant. So what are the benefits of transpiration? While materials such as mineral ions, food molecules and hormones are moved around the plant dissolved in water, this water is brought up the plant by that transpiration pull. So without transpiration, water would not be plentiful, and the transport of materials would not be as rapid. Now it's very hard to measure transpiration because it's difficult to condense and collect all the water that's lost from the parts of the plant. However, we can measure the volume of water that's taken up in a given time by a particular part of the plant, for example, the leafy shoot. Now because 99% of the water taken up by the plant is lost during transpiration, it's easy to measure the transpiration rate or the volume of water taken up because 99% of that water is being taken up through the plant and only 1% is being used by the plant. So we can measure the water uptake by the same shoot under different conditions. The rate of water loss in a plant can be measured using something called a potometer. So the experiment is carried out in different stages. The first stage is you take a leaf or leafy shoot and you cut it under water to prevent any air entering the xylem. You also take care not to put any water on the leaves. The potometer is then completely filled with water so that there's no air bubbles and you use a rubber tube and insert the leafy shoot into the potometer and this is done under water. The potometer is then removed from under the water and all the joints are sealed with waterproof jelly. So how to use it is you measure the distance moved by the air or in this case the water meniscus in a given time period. And you repeat this experiment several times to calculate the mean. So how to calculate the volume of water lost is you use the equation pi r squared and you plot this against the time which is measured in minutes. So once the air or the water meniscus nears the junction of the reservoir in the capillary tube, what you do is you open up the tap. Can you see that tap under the reservoir there? So that water flows in and the meniscus returns to back to the start of the scale in the capillary tube. So this experiment can be repeated to compare the rates of water loss under different conditions. For example, different temperatures, humidities, light intensities, or differences in water loss can be compared between different species under the same conditions.
Now, both internal and external factors affect the rate of transpiration. Plants living in conditions that lead to high transpiration rates often have adaptations which allow them to reduce water loss. And we call these plants xerophytes, as you can see in this picture here. So we're going to discuss xerophytes in more detail in the next topic. So external factors affecting transpiration include humidity. So as you can see in this diagram here, a series of diffusion shells will form in still air around the stomata. Humid air will therefore reduce the diffusion gradient between the leaf air spaces and the atmosphere. So an increase in humidity will decrease the rate of transpiration. What about light intensity? So the stomata open in the light and they close in the dark. So higher light intensities increase the rate of transpiration because more stomata open. The rate will stop increasing once all the stomata are fully open. Temperature alters the kinetic energy of the water molecules and the relative humidity of the air. So an increase in temperature increases the rate of evaporation by providing latent heat of vaporization. Warmer air can also hold more water vapor because, oh sorry, before becoming saturated. So an increase in temperature increases the rate of evaporation and the rate of transpiration. Air movement alters the rate at which moist air is removed from around the leaf. So an increase in air movement increases the removal of still air and it increases the water vapor concentration gradient. Atmospheric pressure. As atmospheric pressure decreases, water vapor pressure decreases. So decrease in atmospheric pressure increases the rate of transpiration. High altitude plants are adapted for the preservation of water. Water supply. So dry soil has a higher concentration of solutes and lower water potential. And when the soil water potential is less than that of the root hair cells, the cells or root hair cells cannot take in water, so permanent wilting occurs. Internal factors, leaf area. So water is lost over the surface area of the leaf, so an increase in the area increases the rate of transpiration. The cuticle, this forms a waterproofing layer over the leaf surface, so if you have a thicker cuticle, this decreases transpiration. Number of stomata. Water lost by evaporation occurs through the stomata, so if you have more stomata, this increases transpiration. And the distribution of the stomata. The upper surface is more exposed to the environmental factors that increase the rate of transpiration, so if you have more stomata on the upper surface, this will increase transpiration. Okay, in summary, we looked at what is transpiration, what is the role of transpiration, how do you measure the water uptake under different conditions using a potometer, and then finally, can you list the different factors that affect transpiration? And that concludes our lesson, the end.